living off grid in the mountains can come with its challenges. I think it's snowing. Huh? Is this, this looks like snow to me. But with high risk comes high reward. Join us as we spend a couple of days in the Spanish Pyrenees looking for our own slice of heaven. We are starting our very relaxing off-grid adventure very much on grid. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here in Hacker, a small town in the mountains of the Pyrenees and as set up for off-grid life that this van is, it doesn't produce its own food. So unfortunately we are going to have to go into town, get some supplies, yeah. then we can head to the mountains. Last night we stayed in one of these free motorhome park up areas, which are really great. They have access to like free dumping station, free water, all that kind of stuff. And although we are looking for our little slice of nature out here, it is nice to know that if it all goes tits up, we can come to a place like this and have all the amenities and be somewhere nice and safe. The mountains are very unpredictable and all good travel should have an element of risk to it. But with the little man, I think it should do. <laughs> but with the little man, we can't be taking crazy risks. So if the weather changes, it's nice that we can get down here. I have just seen an amazing off-grid van. If we had that, I think we could take any kind of risk under the sun. Yeah, I think you could probably survive like a nuclear blast and something like that. <laughs> Something that we're actually having to get used to now that we're away from those big touristy cities is living on Spanish time. It's very different to what we're used to. So everything in this place in particular is closed from about 1, 1.30 p.m. all the way through to about 5, 6, 7 p.m. So the entire afternoon, everything is just completely closed. So what we found is that if we don't get out in the morning and go and do the shopping, get the things that we need to get, that's kind of it for us because Noah goes down to bed about seven or eight. So by the time he's gone down to bed, then everything starts to open up. <laughs> so it's definitely been a little bit of a learning curve for us here. Final job is to empty the toilet and fill up the water, ready for a few days. We actually have a little bit of a traffic jam to wait to use the services here. But it's all free, so we're more than happy to wait. And then we are good to go. in search of our first park up in the Pyrenees. We're heading somewhere up there. We're not a hundred percent sure what we're looking for. We have come off the main road and we're now just sort of heading up into the mountains and we know we want a spot that's obviously in nature, preferably with some nice views and preferably with no one else around. We're using the app Park for Night to try and find our own isolated space and the closest we've found this one here but definitely don't want to risk it so soft on the ground that we would get stuck. What do you think? Fancy driving down here? Absolutely not, that van weighs too much. If we get stuck in the mud down here we are screwed. Plus there's a tree right in the middle of the the thing. I mean this is a cool little spot but absolutely not driving that van through here. <laughs> no chance. This would be amazing with a 4x4. Yeah. While we have stopped for lunch I'm taking a break to unwind and I'm playing June's Journey who are the sponsor of today's video. June's Journey is a really fun murder mystery and hidden object game that takes you on an adventure through the roaring 20s. You follow the protagonist June who is on a quest to solve the murder of her sister. You have to find clues to unravel the mystery and the story is really captivating with so many twists and turns as you progress. 
I love the 1920s vibe to this game, and I've always been into whodunits, so I find this is a really good way to get some me time and to relax when Noah allows. I personally really enjoy the challenge of finding the hidden objects and the clues, and if you do it really quickly then you get a multiplier bonus, and so the perfectionist in me is always trying frantically to find the items in the quickest time possible. After you complete each level, you get given coins, and the quicker that you find the clues, the more coins you get, which you can then spend on a customizable mansion and garden island. I'm building an awesome little island at the moment, which is kind of mirroring what would be my dream house. It's completely free to download, and and it's a lot of fun so if you're looking for a new game to play click the link down in the description it really helps out our channel or click on the QR code that's on screen now it's available on iOS Android and on PC through Facebook games and I hope you like it well we found our spot for the night and it seems exactly what we were looking for. We wanted views of the mountains, which we have basically panoramic views up here, completely alone. I haven't seen a soul the whole time we've been driving. And this seems like the perfect first night. We want some variety, so we are gonna look for a spot each day. But for night one, this is perfect. I feel like part of off-grid living in the mountains with a baby is just gonna be putting him down to sleep and then standing outside in the cold, waiting for him to fall asleep, listening to the van. He may have a sleeping baby. Oh, no, no, he's awake. <laughs> and if he goes to sleep, does that mean we can go back in or we have to wait out here for two hours? <laughs> Which one? We may as well just go back in. <laughs> I feel like he is not going to sleep. The whole trip of surviving in the mountains with the little one is all down to this heating system here. When it's on, it's perfect. It's so toasty and it's going to get very, very cold in the mountains tonight. And this heating system has failed on this trip before. So if it fails, we have to either fix it there and then or we have to make an escape <laughs> straight away down the mountains, tail between our legs, back to the motorhome place. I just said D is for dolphin. He went da, 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 dolphin. Da, da, da. Woo, yeah. While Emma entertains the little one, it is my job for cooking. And tonight it's Spanish night in the van <laughs> and having one of these famous Spanish <laughs> omelets so famous that I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> Spanish tortilla omelets. <laughs> you know just as much like as me. I'm just like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm, I'm the one that has to face this humiliation. <laughs> Emma's making the same face as me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big, oniony, eggy <laughs> delight. Potato. There's <laughs> potato. always potato. And always potato. And we had one of these recently smeared or smothered <laughs> choose your favorite Both adjective sound horrible, to be fair. <laughs> with alioli so i'm gonna try that i'm just gonna warm this up this is what i constitute as cooking i'm just gonna poke at it so it moves and slithers around a bit slithering <laughs> the way that you just describe food just does not sound appetizing in the slightest <laughs> What? Slithering, smothering, what? slathering. What's not to like about my slithering eggy toe? The slithering. Look what you did. Here's your my eggy toe. Your garlic. Covered in garlic. Tart, yeah. <laughs> Want me to feed you? There you go for the camera. <laughs> Oh, Time to batten down the hatches. We have a storm rolling in and it is starting to rain and I am petrified of making a stupid decision and like let's say it's torrential rain now and we get stuck up here. I mean I'll never be able to forgive myself 
and I don't want to advertise stupid things like yeah come into the mountains get stuck in winter uh, but I say that I have done a lot of research this isn't just on a whim as far as I'm aware this is completely safe but how can you ever be completely sure <laughs> I feel like I've really needed this part of the trip of just being somewhere without the plan to go somewhere else. Like we're just here now and we've decided let's just stay in the mountains rather than going chasing beaches and stuff down south because we love the mountains. We're so happy here. And on top of all that, getting to do this with Noah in his cage look at him he's just like quite happily playing on his own for a bit which is a rare thing so we are going to take up this opportunity to let him play enjoy a beer with the view and some pinchos some homemade pinchos this time and yeah just soak it all in thank you very much Unsurprisingly, we didn't get a sunset or a sunrise, but we've got a nice, peaceful, rainy morning. We got a village just waking up down there. I don't mind the rain when it's like this. It's not too crazy. How have been two and three this morning? Obviously, I've been one. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> In my own ranking system, I've got to be number one. That's shocking. What? You gotta love yourself first before you can love anyone else. That's what everyone tells me. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> We're doing great, thank you. How are you this morning? Brilliant. So, would you care for a breakfast of tomato and strawberries as well? <laughs> Having a very red breakfast <laughs> this morning. Uh, I think I'll just stick to coffee. Okay. I think it's snowing. Huh? Is this, this looks like snow to me. Searching for a strawberry right now. <laughs> I don't need this shit. <laughs> yes. Found it. Simple no would have done this. Oh my god, it is snowing, look. It's all coming in on the bed. Close the bloody door, will you? Uh, we came to Spain for the sunshine and then said we're in the snow. <laughs> I don't think we could be in the mountains and be surprised that there's snow. <laughs> I mean, it's March for Christ's sakes. As it turns out, we left just in time and luckily things were way milder down the mountain. <laughs> Why are you holding the bread like that? Oh, they can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it was to symbolise that we've stopped to grab a quick snack. Oh my god. We are currently making our way over to a national park, but on this drive we keep seeing that we're getting closer and closer to the snow basically in these windy mountain roads. So we do also have in the back of our minds that 
plans might change today and we might actually have to just abort this mission and go somewhere else because we cannot be bothered to deal with snow. We're 27 minutes away, 20 kilometers. Every time we start going up, I get a bit nervous, but then it like will drop back down and it's like, I don't want to get 20, min 20 kilometers higher and higher and higher. No. But hopefully like here's fine. So if it's yeah. this kind of level, happy days, we can go hiking, but if it gets too high, then uh, yeah, then we just have to turn around and find somewhere a bit lower. All right, I'm calling it. We're turning around. Are we? Yeah. Let's turn around next time we can safely turn around. Okay. I just, uh, let's just call this a nice scenic drive. <laughs> we almost saw a national park today and that was great. <laughs> we almost saw one. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of snow on the ground now. Finally have a turning space. Should we just stop and actually have a look? Oh, oh wow. Snow? Look at that. Wow, talk about a cabin in, cabin in the snow, cabin in the mountains. That person's shoveling snow out the side of their front door. Wow, oh, there's a bar there. I see old us would be up there drinking right now and just sleep down here. We felt content in our decision to turn around as the snow soon faded away and we worked our way back down through the sunny green valley. We found a lovely little spot right next to the river, just off the road. And so we thought, prime opportunity to stop, fill up on some food, have a nice bit of lunch and continue on. It looks like over there, there's maybe an abandoned village. So I'm gonna go check that out. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with ruins at the moment and I just have so many questions when I see them. Like what was life like here and why has it been abandoned? Was it the lack of industry or the changing times or was it something like a natural disaster? Because this one is actually quite extensive and quite a surprise to find just at our casual lunch spot. More interestingly, there's even signs of life. Like over there people have got some of their washing out. So that must mean that people still live here. I can't imagine what it's like to live in a place that's so abandoned. And why are they still here? We're currently walking up to a church. I'm intrigued to see if that's been completely abandoned as well. I wasn't expecting the entrance to be just open. Part of me is a bit nervous. I can feel just some very cold air, but oh my, my hair is standing up. Ooh. I mean, this is creepy, right? <laughs> Look at the murals on the wall. It is eerily quiet in here. Uh, outside is quite windy. And the second you come in, it's just like dead silence. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. It's strange to be feeling like you're witnessing a part of history, but no recollection, just like discovering something untouched, which I'm sure has happened civilization after civilization and trying to piece together what happened, why it's here. Wow. Hello. Hello. Lunch for me. I've already started. I figured you can eat while I drive. Um, so I've made you some avocado and tomato and local ham, some strawberries. Oh, that looks epic. I get to explore and you make me food. Mm. How traditional. <laughs> it is quite actually. <laughs> you rear the child. <laughs> Hi. 
We spent the afternoon exploring and looking for the perfect park up. Our search soon turned into getting a bit lost and as bad weather started rolling in, we wanted to settle in for the night. But nowhere we came across felt like the right place to stop. Reluctantly, we settled for a scenic car park next to a small village overlooking the river. There's a mountain over there somewhere. Have you even stayed in a van in nature if you haven't filmed yourself having coffee in the morning? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? We took the morning to check out the old village and as we were up so early, we had the whole place to ourselves. We didn't completely achieve what we set out to do, but actually I think by adjusting we had a better trip anyway. Yeah, it was great. And I always, I like that about van life, that you can just roll the punches and kind of take it as it comes and see what happens. Actually, I'd be very interested to hear your guys' stories. What kind of trips have you gone on where it's completely not gone to plan, but it's been really nice anyway? We have actually been off grid in the van for about a month now. Yeah. The last time we used, mm. depending on your definition of off grid, in St. Michelle was the last time that we used electricity. Mm. The van has basically been able to look after Sustain us. us. It's been great, especially considering, you know, we travel with like the camera and all this equipment and that's all been able to be charged. If we'd have stayed in a nature spot last night, we wouldn't Ooh. have discovered this place and we have it all to ourselves it's as we're up early. Gorgeous. I love stumbling upon little places like this on our channels. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you're interested in June's Ooh. journey, check the link down in the description. Ooh. Nothing left to say. We'll see you next time and beans out. Ooh.